born to be making history something greater something higher ain't never gonna stop this fire it's plain reality i was born to be something greater something higher ain't never gonna stop this fire Okay, today we're going to be talking about the tear adapter portable anchor system. So objectives, we're going to talk about the different configurations, identify the components and demonstrate proper assembly of the tear adapter, talk about safety protocols when working with the uh, portable anchors, talk about the principles of force multipliers as they apply to critical angles and resultant forces, and understand and construct a back tie system to stabilize the portable anchor system. So the tear adapter is a versatile portable anchor system uh, that will adjust to any rescue environment. So with that, uh, we have to make sure that we make this portable anchor system bomb proof because it will still be holding a lot of the weight. Basic configurations, the tripod, an edge A tripod or an easel A, an A frame or a bipod, sideways A frame, gin pole or a monopod, and a horizontal span. So we're going to talk a little bit about the head assembly here. It is made up of a main plate, as you can see here, and a half plate. Um, on the main plate, you'll notice that there are a lot of holes here. Uh, these here are going to be your angle adjustment holes. Um, these are good just because you can figure it any way you need to to keep this head plate assembly level. Uh, the half plate is going to have all the same markings as the main plate. You'll also see attachment points at the bottom here. So you have a narrow yoke uh, that can have either a pulley or a carabiner in there. And you have a wider yoke. Uh, that's going to be for your more bulky gear. And all that is going to be held on by this rated pin. There are three other auxiliary attachment points located here, here, and then there's one on the back of the half plate. Um, you can tell the auxiliary attachment points from the angle adjustment points because the auxiliary ones are going to have a rounded edge. And then these auxiliary attachment points are rated for 8,000 pounds. Talk a little bit about the leg clamps. Uh, there are two style of leg clamps. You have the centered and the offsets. Uh, they're safe to use in any position, but the centered leg clamp is, you know, most commonly used in the rear leg. Um, on these leg clamps they're going to have locking pins so with the locking pins they have little grooves cut in them and as you can see in these little screws here uh, those screws are holding a spring with the ball bearing so that will keep it so these pins won't fall out on their own you'll actually physically have to pull them out uh, you do not need to fully remove these pins because they will lock into place where you can attach the leg clamps to the head plate uh, it also will have cotter pins for added security. We'll talk a little bit about the legs of the tear adapter. Um, the legs are going to be strongest when most of the overlap is near the head section. So each leg of the tear adapter will be made up of two perf tubes and one mid tube. Um, we're going to orientate the perf tubes or the gray tubes with one at the bottom and nine at the top uh, and that's going to go for both perf tubes so even if it's going to be the upper section make sure you have one facing the ground uh, these perf tubes will be attached to the mid tubes with a pin as you can see here um, so the perf tube is going to be your initial starting point so you're going to make all your adjustments on the bottom perf tube first uh, and you're going to position and connect any of the lash rings where you need them you're going to orient and attach the leg clamps either offset or centered so um, it doesn't matter which leg goes for you know it could be the center leg or one of the bipod legs it does not matter and then attach the mid tube as close to the leg clamp as possible so attach this mid tube as close to the head of the tear adapter as, you, as possible and then if you add a second or if the second perf tube needs adjustment um, it's 
you can do that that next. Uh, it's always going to be easier though to adjust the bottom perf tube and then the top. Talk a little bit about the feet. Um, so they're designed to be interchangeable um, and make it easier to meet specific rigging needs. So here in Watertown we have the talon and the rocker foot so far. Um, all three are rated for the same weight uh, which is about 6,744 pounds. Uh, they can posi be positioned in 45 degree increments as you can see by all of the, the different holes through the foot. Um, they can be attached either to the perf tube or the mid tube so the longer neck here will fit in the perf tube but it does have a little kind of a, a little raised, raised part that will fit snug in the mid tube as well. And it can be attached to the adapter with an L slot and screw pin. So on these feet, uh, there's an L slot, and then there's just kind of an Allen Allen key uh, or Allen screw that will hold this this pin in. So the talon foot is made up of a long and short aluminum spike. Uh, on these spikes, there's a little carbide tip that is going to be used to penetrate harder surfaces. Um, and you can also use it kind of in to hold it on to uh, railings or grates or something like that and you can also use these as attachment points. The rocker foot is going to be designed to achieve greater angles and again you'll have different attachment points here for your hobbles. And then the articulating foot uh, it is used for hard flat surfaces um, and like it says, this foot will articulate on a ball joint. Uh, there are also holes on this plate here uh, where you can either attach the foot with a bolt or um, screws or driven spikes. So the leg hobbles, um, the leg hobbles per NFPA, each leg needs to be hobbled independently. So you adjust the head angle length legs or head angle and length of the legs before the hobble is tightened. So you're going to get your tear adapter built how you want it uh, before you attach the hobbles. Once you do, you're going to tighten one hobble at a time um, and until each leg flexes in slightly. So it is important to understand and or understand that the ultimate strength of any configuration depends on the ability to secure the feet against movement. So these leg hobbles is going to be what's keeping the tear adapter from spreading apart. Talk a little bit about the lash rings. So they're designed to provide multiple attachment points for stabilization. Um, as you can see they can be installed in any position uh, quantity and orientation on the perf tubes. These will not fit on the mid tubes, they will only fit on the gray perf tubes. Um, and like it says, it doesn't matter, it can be on the front legs, it can be on the back leg, upside down, right side up, it doesn't matter how the orientation is. Um, lash rings can serve as a main attachment point for a monopod, um, or you can also use it as tie backs. So, um, if your load is going to be greater than 5,000 pounds, um, it's best to use the auxiliary points on the head plate rather than these lash rings, though. The quick lash ring, um, it's an auxiliary anchor point that can be added before, during, or even after the setup. Uh, it only connects to the perf tube. It is rated for a straight pull, so straight off. Um, at a weight of 6,744 pounds and it can also handle a side pull of 3,372 pounds but avoid any rigging that will cause these legs to rotate or twist um, and then do not use the bail pins as an attachment point because this is not strong enough or I'm sorry, do not uh, do not use the bail pins as you can see here, like on the perf tube. Uh, make sure you use the pin that comes with the lashing ring because this one is the rated one. The bail pins are not rated to hold those loads. So talk a little bit about the care and assembly. So um, first, you can clean clean with water. 
and dry completely. Um, remember, it is metal. It's mostly aluminum, but uh, make sure you uh, dry all the moisture off. Clean parts will last longer and they will also adjust easier. So you can check for on the head assembly, uh, check for excessive wear on load locking pins, um, and also just check on the eye, um, the the powder coating on that that head plate. Make sure it's not damaged. Leg clamps, um, check the leg clamps for any warping or different or wear. Leg tubes, I retire leg tubes if they will not slide into each other um, smoothly. So if there's any warp or anything like that, if they can't slide through um, the mid tube or the perf tube can't slide through the mid tube easily, uh, it's time to retire that leg. Replace any leg coupling pin if worn or bent. Small burrs can be removed with the file though. Um, the feet, make sure uh, that the spikes on the talon feet are sharp. Um, if they need to be replaced, replace them. Um, make sure none of the parts are bent or warped. And then also check for any burrs or sharp edges. And again, if you find any burrs or sharp edges, they can be cleaned up with the file. On the hobbles, make sure that the rope is good. It's free of any cuts or abrasions. And then also make sure that the screw link carabiners are in good working condition. Lash rings and the quick lash, make sure there's no bending or warping. Um, and then again, check for burrs or sharp edges. You can use an inspection or you can use an inspection record to keep track of what you did with that tear adapter. Um, so it'll also it'll kind of tell you the cleanliness, the dryness, corrosion, any distortion, any excessive wears, scratches, gouges, sharp edges. Uh, you can log all of this on a user sheet and it can be found in the instruction manual. So here's just an example of that inspection record. So just like rope, you can say when you used it and how you cleaned it. So two main factors that affect the tear adapter uh, are going to be your head angle and the height of the system. Those are going to be the two factors that affect the total strength and safety of this. The wider the angle, the weaker it's going to be. The higher the system, um, uh, it's actually going to be stronger if your angles are are in, um, but you also have a greater risk of it tipping over. So there are four safety checks when working with not only the tear adapter but any artificial high directional. Um, you're looking for slips, spread, resultant force, and the guy line rule of four minimum. So we don't want our system to slip or move around. Uh, so we can fix that by guying it down or tying it down. We don't want the tear adapter to spread, so that's why we use the leg hobbles. We want to make sure our resultant forces are good um, so that it doesn't tip the system over. And we also want to make sure it's tied down properly with the guy lines. So talk a little bit about resultant forces. Um, so a resultant force are going to be component forces on each side of the pulley. So you have force here and force here. The resultant force is going to be these two angle or this angle split directly in half. So the blue arrow is showing the resultant force. It's, uh, it's invisible. You can't see it. Um, you just kind of have to eye your system, eye your angles of your rope on your pulley and you should be able to determine by going straight down right through the middle of the pulley you should be able to determine where your resultant force is falling uh, in your footprint of the tear adapter. So here's a quick video of if your resultant forces are off what can happen to the tear adapter. Well, training is a big part of a firefighter's job. Last week, we showed you some special operations response team training. Now, to see what it really takes, we're taking our cameras into the middle of it all. News Channel 15's Alyssa Ivinson has the story. High angle rope rescue is calculated and complicated. To bring you an exclusive look inside the training from start to finish, I went in the basket as the patient, and we saw firsthand why safety is always at the forefront. 
Blue. The Special Operations Response Team, or SORT, is ready to respond to difficult rescues. Yeah. Like trench cave-ins, structural collapses, or from towers or grain bins. I did a carabiner with a clove hitch and tightened up tight. 36 members, 12 per fire department shift. A little slack on the system. They train every Wednesday. It's important because it keeps us sharp and keeps us utilizing all those rope skills that we've trained to, to get. Our cameras joined the sea shift for high angle rescue training. It started with a briefing to review previous trainings and how to improve. We moved the tripod closer and we put it about two foot. For this exercise, the objective was to lower a patient in a basket from the top of the Rousseau Center to the roof of the parking garage. After hauling up all the equipment... We're running all the uh, main and belay lines off of this giant leg. The setup begins. Those are absolutely the two pillars that we've been using. It's methodical and precise, making sure every rope, pulley, and knot is in place and secure. The track rope that carries the basket runs from an anchor through a pulley at the top of a tripod and down to the parking garage. Safety backups for each rope. So if something happens to the red, the yellow's still holding the load. If something happens to the yellow, the red's still holding the load. Once the tension in the track was tested, it was time to load me in the basket. We're getting ready to put her over the edge. The ride down was smooth. From my viewpoint, I couldn't really tell how high we were, but a sky cam shows us gliding through the air. Once at the bottom, the crew pulled us back up. Okay. The rope stretches, and when we were back at the building, we were too low to clear the edge. Let's try to pull a little tension on the track line and raise them up. Then out of nowhere... I'll stop, stop. The tripod toppled. This white line right here was what failed. That was to keep the tripod from tipping over. That rope didn't work the way it was supposed to and the tripod tipped. So we lost the high point, so they dropped down and rested on the edge. The drop only a few feet. The ropes never compromised. They just weren't high through the tripod anymore. The system stayed intact, and we were once again lowered to the garage. All of the backups were in place. Nobody got dropped. She got lowered a little bit, right? A couple, two, three feet, but she's safely down on the ground right now. We don't like contingencies to happen during the training sessions. There's nothing more valuable than that. As we saw in training or at a scene, the unexpected can happen. That's the nature of the job. That's also why firefighters always have extra precautions in place, because it's not just about the rescue. It's about the safety of everyone involved. Alyssa Ivinson, News Channel 15. All right, now we'll talk about the guy line. So remember the guy line rule of four. So that means the number of poles plus the number of guy lines should equal four. Uh, guy lines can be made up either of eight millimeter cord, which is rated up to 4,500 pounds, um, but pre preferably half inch rope. Um, that half inch rope should be tied right to those lash rings or it could be attached directly to the main plate. Uh, the angle of the guys should be no closer than 30 degrees to the pole you are guying. Um, with that, uh, what we're trying to avoid is a breakover effect. So anything less than 30 degrees could cause a, a sudden breakover, um, which would look similar to what was just shown in that video. Also, uh, or I guess so, a preferred angle would be about 45 degrees from the legs that you are guying. Guys are made up of adjustable guys and tensioning guys. So the adjustable guys, um, make sure you have those on the side that's hardest to get at. Uh, adjustable guys are going to be pretty much just what's capturing the load which will more than likely be um, uh, figure eight with a prusik attached to it. Tensioning guys on the side easiest to get at so where you have more room to work. Uh, and then make sure your guys are going to have the proper angles so if you if you have four guys they can go 90 degrees out if you're using three guy lines. Um, try to split them up to be about 120 degrees apart, just to to make that that equal. So, the adjustable guys usually set on the opposite side of the tensioning guys. Uh, again, make sure this is the easier side to get at, or the hardest side to get at, where you don't have a lot of room. This is going to be the side, you know, where your edge is. 
most of the time it's going to be made up of a figure eight knot um, and the load is going to be captured by a prusik. The tensioning guys are going to be on the opposite side of the adjustable guys uh, and again these are going to be the ones where you have more room to work. So uh, they can be made up of the voodoo hitch as shown here. Uh, just a simple pretension back tie or you can also use an Aztec. Um, but keep in mind we only have a certain number of Aztecs and they are also very valuable in other parts of a rope rescue. So we'll talk a little bit about the configurations. So the tripod used for a straight vertical access all three legs are equally loaded this is going to be the strongest configuration of the tear adapter. Um, the resultant force you're going to want to be in the center of all three legs. So pretty much the you can kind of get an outline of where you want your resultant forces by looking at the leg hobbles. You want that pulley to be pointing directly in the center of those leg hobbles. So just kind of the uh, this is what a page from the manual looks like. So you can adjust the tear adapter to any size that you need for the job, uh, but they have tested certain configurations. So here, it's broken down. The main plate and head, or the main plate head angle settings will be AA. So that means you're going to want the arrow on the leg clamps to be pointing at A's on on the both front legs, and on the half plate it'll be at setting B. You're going to have your upper section coupling at X7 uh, for a, or let's go for a 7 foot tripod. Uh, you'll have your upper section at Y7, your lower section at X9. That'll give you a hobble length of 69 inches in between and a rating of one or 12,100 pounds. So a 7 foot tripod is rated for 12,000 pounds. So just a picture of a symmetrical tripod that we used. So you can see we have the head plate as level as we can. Um, each tripod or each leg is sharing equally sharing the load uh, and our resultant forces are on this confined space four to one and it is going right in the center of our hobble lines. So that is that means all three legs are sharing that load equally. The edge A or easel A can be used near an edge, um, used when there's a changing of angles in like a uh, uh, track line for a you know like a Norwegian Reeve or something like that uh, but it does need a large area to work and again the resultant force is going to be in the center of the three legs so again just to kind of break down this is a page in the manual again how to set up a six foot tripod or edge a tripod and the main plate would be setting at BB so the front legs will be set at the angle B and the half plate will be at angle D you're gonna set your front legs uh, on the lower section to be X9 your upper section will be Y7, uh, your rear leg lower section will be X9, upper will be X1. So make sure when you're doing this <clears throat> that you're either leaving uh, an extra hole up top like it's shown here for a lash ring. You can either go on the rear leg or you can go on the two front legs just so you can uh, have that lash ring for tiebacks. So here's a picture of the uh, the easel A going over our training tower. So you can see we have our adjustable guys in the front. Uh, all that is just a half inch rope with a figure eight on a bite um, and the load is being captured by prussics. And here we have uh, just the voodoo hitch pulling tension. So we're pulling tension against these adjustable guys. You can see our resultant forces here on our main line coming up through the pulley. Uh, if you cut that in half, 
it would be directly in the middle of this triangle. So we want our resultant forces anywhere inside these guy lines. That will help there, that will keep the load centered and these legs sharing it. A standard A-frame um, or a bipod can be used in narrow areas um, leaning over or away from the edge uh, so by loading it or compressing that that tripod uh, that is how you kind of load the whole system your resultant forces need to be in line or slightly in front of the legs on the bipod though a sideways a-frame again used in a narrow area uh, can be used when there's a changing of uh, angles and again the resultant forces are between the two legs a gin pole or monopod used in close quarters um, it's a, can be used as a second portable anchor if you need to for again for like the track line the resultant forces in line with the legs or slightly in front of the leg so again you want the resultant force to be close to the pole or the gin pole or the monopod as possible a horizontal span this can be used more in industrial settings um, but uh, so we could go from I-beam to I-beam um, and use get the, or get that artificial high directional that way so uh, there are two two settings for the horizontal span you can use two two of the legs or just one leg um, so horizontal span single or a four foot single has a rating of 5600 pounds and a four foot double has a rating of 8200 pounds all right just to recap everything I remember the number of perf tubes or the numbers on the perf tubes go from one at the bottom nine to the top uh, if the sharp holes are for the pins well the rounded holes are for the tie backs on the on the head plate each leg needs to be hobbled separately that's per NFPA and remember the four safety checks you want to prevent slips spread make sure your resultant forces are good and you have a guideline rule of four um, after this lecture here we will show a video of us setting up just an easel a um, configuration of the tear adapter so this is the gear laid out for the tear adapter So it's best to designate tasks so each firefighter has their own job just to be efficient at setting up the tear adapter. Um, so as you can see here, one firefighter will grab the head plate and the leg clamps while the other two start working on the legs. Remember, any of the tubes will work for any of the legs. Uh, it's just best to make sure that you have the perf tubes orientated so that the one will be facing the ground and nine is facing the top. Uh, make sure you do that in all three legs of your tear adapter. Please be mindful when you're setting up the tear adapter. There are multiple small parts on this that can easily go missing. Once the head plate and legs are assembled, you can attach them. Slide the front legs in first. Make sure you're leaving enough room to attach the lash rings if you need them.
It's best to leave the center leg clamp to be able to pivot freely. Uh, this will make it easier to slide that rear leg into place. It may take another firefighter to raise the foot end of the rear leg to help slide the perf tube into the center leg clamp. Once you have the legs attached to the head plate, you can stand the tear adapter up. Once you get your tear adapter to the proper angles, you can lock the pins and continue tying it down. Now that the tear adapter is standing up, we can slide it into place. The tear adapter should be tied off to an anchor at this point. Now we're going to work on hobbling the legs. Remember, per NFPA, each leg has to be independently hobbled. Use the screw links provided to attach the hobbles to each foot of the tear adapter. Once each hobble is attached, it is time to tighten it up. Remember, you want to snug the hobbles just tight enough to slightly move the legs inward. Now the firefighters are going to be working on the tiebacks, the main line, and the belay line system. Please note, for this demonstration, we are not using a bomb proof anchor for the main and belay line. The main line is going to be ran through a pulley and attached to the yoke at the base of the head plate. Remember, you do not need to fully remove that pin. So the two firefighters are working on the tensioning guys. The far firefighter is going to be tying the voodoo hitch, Well, the closest firefighter is just going to be tying your normal pretensioned back tie. As you can see, when the tensioning guys are being tightened, uh, it can slightly move the tear adapter back. 
Uh, this can be stopped by using adjustable guys in the front or tying the legs down. For this system we are only using two guy lines, which will be good enough to still follow the guy line rule of fours. One firefighter is pulling resistance against the tear adapter while the other is tensioning the guys. This is just preventing the tear adapter from sliding back. So our four key safety factors are met. We have the guy line rule of four covered because we have the two tensioning guys with the three legs of the tripod. We're preventing any slips because of the properly tensioned guy lines. We're preventing any spreads because each leg is hobbled independently. And we also have made sure that the resultant force is properly placed inside the footprint of the easel a tripod. Please practice with this piece of equipment so you can become familiar with it. I'm gonna stop this fire.